Hi everyone, this is Dr. Madhuri from the MDS Conquer. Today I am going to discuss few important granulomatous bacterial infections. That means these infections are associated with the granuloma formation. They are like tuberculosis, syphilis, leprosy, actinomycosis. So before going into the bacterial infections, usually human fetus is sterile but at colonization occurs at birth. And within hours, the oral cavity is accommodated with both alpha and non-hemolytic streptococci. So, in when yeast are also present in the birth, and if, when you see at the two months of the age, the our oral cavity is associated with Vionella species. And if if you see at the six months of the age, that oral cavity, the predominant species are Fusobacterium and non-pigmented Privotella species. If you go into 12 months, the oral cavity is predominant with Capnocytophaga species. First, going into the tuberculosis. This tuberculosis is mainly caused by Mycobacterium tuberculo tuberculae and these are the other species which are responsible for the tuberculo tuberculosis formation. Mode of transmission includes whether it may be of inhalation or a ingestion, inoculation or a transplacental route. There are two types of tuberculosis uh, that is primary tuberculosis and secondary tuberculosis. If, if you go into the primary tuberculosis, this occurs in the patient who has not, not been previously infected or immunized. And you have to remember one important thing about this primary tuber tuberculosis is formation of Gohn's complex. That is, Gohn's complex is associated with the primary tuberculosis. And this Gohn's complex will have a pulmonary component and a lymphatic vessel component. So, this is the Gohn's focus which is with primary tuberculosis. And the fate of primary tuberculosis may be a fibrosis or a calcification or a, it may change into a progressive form or it may ends up with a miliary form that means including or associating with many organs that is multi-organ involvement. So it may end up with a calcification or a fibrosis even reactive lesions can be formed like miliary tuberculosis which including the lungs, liver and all the multi-organ involvement can be seen. If you go into the secondary tuberculosis, here the individual is previously infected or is sensitized. And here the secondary tuberculosis we can see in the organs like tongue, lungs, tonsils, pharynx and small intestine. And here the infection may be of endogenous source or a exogenous source. And even this fate of secondary tuberculosis may be a fibrosis or a calcification or it may lead into a progressive pulmonary tuberculosis and finally it may end up with a miliary tuberculosis with multi-system or a multi-organ involvement. What are the clinical features of pulmonary tuberculosis? This pulmonary tuberculosis is associated with prodromal symptoms like fever, fatigue and malice and the important point here is the patient may have a night sweats and along with that cough and that cough is with a blood colored or a blood streaked sputum and even the, in these patients they complains of a chest pain and because of pulmonary involvement you can see a tracheal deviation and you can hear the bronchial breath sounds which are very dull and extra pulmonary tuberculosis is nothing but these occurs in other systems other than the pulmonary system and the involvement of cervical and hilar nodes is called as scrofula scrofula is nothing but a glandular swelling in front it, it means a female with full neck and if you bones and joints are involved it is called as a pots disease and if skin is involved it is called as a lupus vulgaris these are the important points for the examination so oral coming into the oral manifestations if in primary tuberculosis we can see the most commonly involved thing is gingiva whereas in secondary tuberculosis the most commonly involved is tongue and palate and these oral manifestations we can see as a ulcer form or a nodular form or a granulomas form that is granulomas are nothing but a i mean excessive growth or a plaque type of tissues so if it occurs on the tongue the most common site is the lateral border you can see in the picture and other things that ulcer may be of a having an undermined edge which is an important point to note down 
behind you can see here small granulomas or ulcerations in the palate or a floor of the mouth even the lips can show a granulating ulcers and even it can involve the bone in bone which may lead to the formation of tubercular osteomyelitis and even it can involve the major salivary glands like parotid gland followed by the submandibular gland and these are the investigations for the tuberculosis that is ex examination of sputum and here the OPG is important because in chronic cases we can see a soft tissue calcification or a soft tissue calcification of lymph nodes they are nothing but a dystrophic calcification even in the chest x-ray we chest x-ray we can see the calcifications and these are the other tests diagnostic tests like FNSE, PCR, ELISA these are the other investigations for the tuberculosis going into the treatment there are two line of drugs that is first line and second line and these are the drugs which are used as a first line or a first choice it, a mostly used drug is rifampin whereas the second line of these are the second line of drugs which are used in the treatment of tuberculosis and in the tuberculosis we will use the multi-drug regimen that is for a new cases or cases which again becomes mere positive and if you see a relapses or a failure in the treatment so these are the combination of the drugs used for the new cases these are the combination of the drugs used for the cases which have smear positive and and these are the drugs used for the relapses treatment failure and here you can note the shortcuts of these drugs which is H is isoniazid, R is rifampanin, S is for streptomycin, E is ethambutol, Z is pyrazinamide and T is thiaacetazone. So second going into the second granulomatous infection that is leprosy. It is also called as a Hansen's disease. It was given by Hansen and the causative organism is the mycobacterium leprae. Mode of transmission may be whether a direct contact or a maternofetal transmission or even transmission from milk of a leprosy patient. If we go into the classification, there are of two types. One is lepromatous type and tubercular type. And but now current classification, we are using posi bacillary and multi bacillary. And these are the Ridley and Jopping's classification. There are seven types. In this tuberculite polar has a high resistance, whereas lepromatous polar has a low resistance. This is the difference between lepromatous leprosy and the tuberculoid leprosy. Whereas you can see asymmetrical lesions in the tuberculoid leprosy. There is no clear zone in the tuberculoid leprosy. And bacilli in the lepromatous leprosy or a cigarettes in a pack. Whereas you, if, when you compare with this with tuberculoid leprosy, it is a granular or a beaded forms. And again in lepromin test is positive for tuberculoid leprosy where it is negative for the lepromatous leprosy and the reactions which you can see in the leprosy are of two types that is borderline reactions and erythema nodosum type of reactions and the current classification of posi bacillary and multi bacillary type in posi bacillary it is nothing but the entire it resembles the tubercular pattern of leprosy and here oral lesions are very rare then multi bacillary leprosy here you can see few oral lesions and you can see the uh, multiple macular or a growths or a papules type of structures on the skin and the facies which are seen in this multi bacillary leprosy or leonine facies and hair including eyebrows and eyelashes often is lost in multi bacillary leprosy this coming to the oral manifestations Usually only 19 to 60 percent of the cases will have oral manifestations and in the oral manifestations the mostly involved site is heart palate along with this other sites can also be in other sites also you can see the manifestations and this affected soft tissues will appear yellow to red and even in few cases there is a complete loss of eula and there is with a fixation of soft palate. And this is the important point, macrochelia, it is nothing but infection of the lip which leads to macrochelia and facies leprosy, we will see the atrophy of the anterior nasal spine 
along with the atrophy of anterior maxillary alveolar ridge and endonasal inflammatory changes all these things will convert into facies leprosa when you coming into the dental manifestations you will see the enamel hypoplasia of the teeth with short tapering roots and even the palpal infections and internal resorptions or necrosis are also common in, with this leprosy coming to the treatment the most commonly used drugs are rifampin and dapsone but in multi basilary we will use clofazimin along with this rifampin and dapsone if this patients are allergic to rifampin we will give clofazimin and minocycline and this thalidomide is important because it it is used in the management of complication of leprosy therapy then the third infection is of syphilis it is also called as lewis what is the causative organism it is streptonema pallidum the modes of transmission may be through a sexual contact or from mother to fetus or blood transfusion accidental inoculation or puncture with contaminated instruments these are the modes of transmission of syphilis if you go into the history this syphilis has different names in french it is termed as neapolitan itch whereas in russians call it as a polish disease in italian it is morbus callius and in jean fennel he discovered or coined the term lewis in the 16th century classification is of two types acquired and congenital that is basic classification whereas acquired is of again three to four types that is primary secondary where you will see a latency period then it turns into a tertiary infection and the last basic thing is congenital syphilis primary syphilis the most important characteristic uh, feature is of canker for the primary syphilis and this canker occurs 2 to 4 weeks after exposure to the infection this canker is nothing but a initially it is a painless papule then it undergoes a ulceration and develops into a canker and this because of this ulceration you will see a regional lymphadenitis secondary syphilis Uh, the characteristic uh, manifestations of secondary syphilis are mucus patches you can see here in the picture mucus patches or a mucocutaneous lesions and one more thing is the candeloma lata this mucus patches you can see in mouth pharynx and even as a vagina and even a, like it centralized skin eruptions where is candeloma lata this is candeloma lata it is nothing but a, it it looks like a viral papillomas it mostly occurs in the dorsum of the tongue and even this prodromal symptoms are associated or followed by the necrotic ulcerations which give the terms lewis maligna so mucus patches condyloma lata and lewis maligna is associated with the secondary syphilis going into the tertiary syphilis here the latent actually the patient after the secondary syphilis will go into a latent syphilis or a latency phase and this latency phase is remain for a 1 to 30 years then from latency period this patient will um, this patient will go into the tertiary syphilis so in the tertiary syphilis the entire multi organ system is involved and if you go into the vas it involves the vascular system or a central nervous system and the important oral manifestation is gamma it is nothing but it it causes the perforation of the palate and other manifestations are interstitial glossitis and luet glossitis that is nothing but syphilis involving the tongue is called as luetic glossitis so for tertiary syphilis it is gamma interstitial glossitis and luetic glossitis congenital syphilis here you can see the important manifestation is hutchinson triad it is nothing but a hutchinson teeth ocular interstitial interstitial keratitis and eighth nerve deafness this is important for the exam and hutchinson's teeth are a screw driver shaped incisors and mulberry molars these are these are the hutchinson's teeth this all are the diagnosis which we can do for the exam i mean which we can do for the diagnostic test as for the syphilis and in the treatment benzodiazepine and penicillin it is the most drug of choice in the syphilis and uh, these drugs are also in, uh, used alternatively when benzodiazepine pen, maybe patient if have a allergic to penicillin or other alternative drugs or these are the other alternative drugs but the drug of choice is benzodiazepine and penicillin then the fourth one is actinomyces infection that is actinomycosis 
the causative factor or etiology is of actinomyces here the important form of this actinomyces is cervical facial actinomyces and it is the most common where you can see the oral manifestations or a head and neck manifestations and here the organism enters through the mucous membrane and it spreads into the subjacent uh, soft tissues or to salivary glands where it can involve the bone and causes swelling and induration of the tissues and even this swelling may develop into one or more abscesses the important characteristic feature of this disease is liberating pus containing the sulfur granules which is associated with actinomycosis and you have to remember actinomycosis is not a fungal infection it is a bacterial infection and a granulomatous infection so here you can see the pus generated with the sulfur granules and here with a high doses of antibiotic that is mostly will use penicillin with a metronidazole combination and there should be the abscess drainage and excision of the sinus tracts so i hope that these you have uh, learned these things and these are the very important things and you have to remember all the discussed things are bacterial infections which are associated with granuloma formation and hence they are called as granulomatous infections and those are very very important for the knee